In the previous videos, I introduced the concept of limit of a function at a point. In this video, I want to explain what the limit of a function at infinity is. The motivating question is the following. When I talk about the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x, I am asking, when x is very large, what happens to f of x? That is a vague question. And I'm going to begin with an example that won't be rigorous, just to gain some intuition about what this means geometrically, and then I will move on to give a formal definition. My first example will be this function f defined by f of x equals x plus 1 over x, which can be rewritten as 1 plus 1 over x, and rewriting it this way is convenient when we're going to talk about what happens if x is very large. So when x approaches infinity, which roughly means for now x is very large, I can say that 1 over x will be very small. So for example, if x is 1 million, then 1 over x will be very close to 0. And approximately zero is what that squiggly line means. And therefore, the function f at x, which is 1 plus 1 over x, will be very close to 1. In this situation, I'm going to say that the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals 1. And for now, the idea simply means that if x is very large, then f of x is very close to a number. And I say that that number is the limit at infinity. I can represent this with a graph. Here is the graph of the function f that I just was studying, in blue, and in red I have drawn the graph of the line y equals l. And indeed, when x is very large, f of x is close to l, so the graph of the function and the graph of the line become very close. In other words, we have what we call a horizontal asymptote at infinity. If you have learned about horizontal asymptotes in high school, perhaps your teacher taught you that it is a line that gets closer and closer to the graph of the function, but it never touches it. Unfortunately, that is not correct. That is not what an asymptote is. Because, for example, here is another function whose graph does have an asymptote. The limit as x goes to infinity of f of x, in this case, is l. And yet, the two graphs do intersect, they touch. And here is another example where the two not only touch, but they get intimate. They intersect many times. But it is still a horizontal asymptote. Okay, well, we have some intuition of what geometrically and algebraically means that the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals l. What I need now is a rigorous formal definition. I begin with the idea that if x is large, then f of x must be close to l. I want to transform this into something more formal. First, like before, I'm going to say that f of x being close to l is the same as the distance between f of x and l is small. The distance between f of x and l is the absolute value of their difference. And to say that this quantity is small, I say that it is smaller than epsilon, where epsilon is probably some small number, some cutoff. I'm going to have to explain what I mean by epsilon exactly in a moment. On the other hand, to say that x is large, I'm simply going to say that x is greater than some other cutoff, and I'm going to call it m. So, if m is a large number and epsilon is a small one, then that's a way to rewrite this in terms of inequalities. But again, I'm going to have to specify what I mean by m and epsilon. First, let's have a look at what this means in the graph of the function. Saying that the distance between f of x and l is smaller than epsilon means that f of x must be between l minus epsilon and l plus epsilon. So f of x must be here. On the other hand, saying that x is greater than m simply means that x is to the right of this cutout m. So x is here. Now, let's think about what the implication means. When x is greater than m, f of x must be between l minus epsilon and l plus epsilon, so in this window. In other words, these root 2 regions are forbidden. But when x is smaller than m, the function could be anywhere. So, for example, for this value of m and this value of epsilon, this could be the graph of a function that satisfies that. Now, if this is true for just one value of m fixed and one single value of epsilon fixed, then that's not enough. That doesn't guarantee that the limit is L. That doesn't guarantee my function comes arbitrarily close to L. If I compare M and Epsilon, the important one is Epsilon. As long as the domain of the function is the right one, it is certainly not difficult to take values of X large. So to make X greater than M is not going to be an accomplishment. It's not going to tell me that the limit of the function exists. On the other hand, what matters is that I'm able to put the graph of the function in this window when Epsilon is small. So what matters is not that this is true for some values of epsilon, but for all values of epsilon, well, the only ones I care is when it is small. 
If I keep making this smaller and smaller and I can still keep it in there, it's going to mean the function gets arbitrarily close to it. So I'm going to add here at the top uh, for every epsilon greater than zero. And that means I want this to be true no matter which value of epsilon positive I take. But for each such value of epsilon, it is only necessary that I find one value of m that works. So I'm going to put that as there exists a real number m. And that value of m may depend on epsilon. So if I choose one value of epsilon, I find one value of m. If I make epsilon smaller and make this window narrower, I may have to take a value of m bigger. If I make epsilon even smaller, I will find yet another value of m probably bigger. But no matter what epsilon I choose, no matter how close I want f of x and l to v, I will find a cut of m that guarantees I can do that. So there we have it. That's the definition I was looking for. To summarize, we say that the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals l when, for every positive real number epsilon, there exists a real number m such that if x is greater than m, then the distance from f of x to l is less than epsilon. One way to interpret this is that we can make the function as close to L as possible by taking large values of x. If you tell me how close you would like the function and the limit to be, in other words, if you give me epsilon, then I can tell you how large x must be, meaning I can produce m. And for every epsilon you give me, you tell me how close you want then, I can produce an m. I tell you how large x is. For this to be a proper formal definition, I should introduce all the variables. So I will add at the top that L must be a real number and F must be a function. And to make sense, to talk about this limit, I'm going to require that F is a function that's defined at least on an interval of the form P infinity for some real number P. In other words, so that we can talk about what happens to the function when X is large.